So a very warm good morning to one and all and welcome to the day five of the capacity building program and the pre-PhD course on research methodology in social sciences organized by HJC Center of Innovation under the aegis of USA. In every research work, it is essential to adopt a systematic procedure to collect data using an app tool. But how does a researcher realize that the tool is suitable? And if a suitable tool is not available, how should a researcher construct a tool and use the tool if effectively? All these and many more questions will be answered in our today's session on tool construction, validity, reliability, and standardization. To help us understand the complex task of tool construction, we have with us an erudite scholar, a passionate researcher, and above all, a lovely and most wonderful person, Professor Pratnya Vakpanzen, head Department of Education, SNDT Women's University. Participants, I deem it a privilege to have received this opportunity to introduce to all of you our esteemed resource person. Ma'am has done her MSc in Botany from Nagpur University, Masters of Education and Doctorate of Education from SNDT Women's University. She has also to her credit postgraduate diploma in management of education from University of Mumbai and Bachelor of Special Education from Indira Gandhi National Open University. In her illustrious career spanning over 23 years, Ma'am has to her credit seven PhD degrees awarded to her students under her guidance. Currently, there are four students pursuing their doctoral work under Ma'am's guidance. Ma'am has guided more than 110 students for MED dissertation and three for postgraduate diploma management of education pro uh, projects. Ma'am has wide, vast teaching exp expertise in varied subjects at postgraduate diploma and master's level of program. Ma'am also played a significant role in the completion of departmental project EPG Patshala Introductory Course in Education Management. Exploring the field of education to, through research has been Ma'am's interest. And hen, hence, Ma'am has to her credit, researches not just in teaching and learning, but also in the social context of the system. Ma'am has some time ago explored the employability skill of teachers with funding from ICSSR. Participants, I would like to share with you that I have personally benefited by Ma'am's astute perspective. Ma'am, I can still remember uh, our intense discussions over a cup of coffee in Kesarkar Ma'am's room. Of course, I can never ever forget our trip to SNDT Pune campus for my PhD Open Viva. Ma'am, I take this opportunity on behalf of our parent body Gujarat Research Society, our principal madam, Dr. Anita Swami, the entire HJC faculty, and all the participants to extend a warm welcome to you. Also, um, it is a privilege for me to uh, have received this opportunity to introduce you to all our participants. Participants, I request you to use the applause reaction button on your Zoom platform to welcome Ma'am. I am sure all the participants are eagerly waiting to listen and learn from Ma'am. Ma'am, I humbly request you to commence with your session and I hope that you have an enjoyable time with our participants. With this, over to you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Dr. Usha, for uh, for uh, 
so beautiful adjectives uh, describing me uh, i do not really know you know it must have elevated the expectations of the participants but uh, yes let me uh, very humbly uh, convey to everybody that each one of us is a researcher so i would not like to be you know the expert in the field but yes i would really love to interact with you all so i i thank the uh, gujarat research society and the dr anita swami principal uh, along with them you are the coordinators dr karuna sinha dr usha borkar and dr archana uh, for inviting me and giving this opportunity to interact uh, but uh, uh i mean i really do not know what usha madam actually talked about me so high so do i really meet those expectations or no i'm not much aware about it but yes i would definitely try to and i would love to interact with you all in this session uh so as uh, usha madam very correctly said that it's very very important and at the same time very difficult state in the entire research process so when we talk about the construction of tool or selection of tool as a researcher we have to keep lot of things in mind uh, so uh, usha madam is it okay that uh, uh, we'll start the points and if they have in the queries in between so say the moment we finish the validity we'll talk about the validity is it okay that way is it okay yes ma'am yes ma'am and then yeah on and above whatever the questions we have we can handle at the end of the session as well yes ma'am definitely okay. as you see okay okay thank you very much so let me share my screen and if if by chance any problem with the uh, connectivity is there so uh, can you give me permission to switch off my video in case there is a problem right now it is going on well but uh, definitely ma'am definitely yeah? no issues because yeah. sometimes i do feel that uh, yes. there is some problem during some sessions so then i had to you know for the bandwidth issue i had to then stop no, my no video no problem no problem as you yeah? feel comfortable ma'am yeah okay thank you very much and uh, can i share my screen yes ma'am the permission has been given you may share it is it visible yes ma'am it is visible okay yes so i welcome everybody uh, to discuss regarding the research tools how we have to construct the tool standardize the tool maybe i will not be in a position to really take you through the standardization process and the techniques but yes we will discuss about the construction of tool i am sure all of you uh, in your masters have done this but it this is kind you know we are recalling we are refreshing our memories and we are trying to uh, move towards perfection so i think the, in the research we do expect that an individual should should be passionate and it's it's a searching for truth so when i'm searching for truth naturally for for to search it i have to document it properly i have to measure things properly i have to give evidences that are, that are perfect and therefore that construction of tool becomes very very important aspect so how are we going to collect the data what are the, our intentions so all these things we have to keep in mind and we have to move on for the construction of tool uh, so today we are going to discuss few of the points and the first point we will be discussing about how are we going to differentiate in the tools and the techniques so what do you mean by tools and what do you mean by techniques uh, how these things are different from each other because there are some some sometimes uh, the words that we are using they are confusing 
So let us just have a clarity on it. Then we will be discussing about the characteristics of the tool. We, you, you all know about it, but yes, we are going to discuss and uh, uh, whether in the new context, again, the characteristics, we have to really relook into it or what. Then the different types of tools which are used. Now, uh, today, I'll, my focus is more on the quantitative type of researches. So I'll be dealing more with the quantitative type of uh, researches and how do we go about the tools construction in those cases. Then the steps in the development of tool and then the standardization of tool. Uh, now, when we talk about the life, that the life is not measured by the number of breaths we take, but by the number of moments that take our breath away. So therefore, you know, when we talk about the measurement, the measurement is, is a very important uh, aspect. And the measurement is a process where we are observing and we are properly systematically recording this observation and during your research this is something which is the extremely important step now because it is extremely important step this is going to give me the evidence this is going to help me to to interpret and put the things across. Therefore, my measurement tool, what am I using? That has to be very, very accurate. The, the findings which I'm going to give through this tool, they need to be reliable. So the people should rely on the findings that I am giving through the data that I am collecting through my tool. Now, when we are talking about this tool, we have to answer some questions. The first question, as, as we say, that the research is nothing but asking the questions again and again to ourselves. So when we keep asking questions again and again to ourselves, we are getting more and more answers about it. At the same time, we are getting more confused about things. That is okay. Now, when we are looking into this uh, construction of tool, or when we have to think about the tool which is to be used, the first and the most important question that comes in the mind, the way you, you have all the time questions in your mind, throughout your research process. So the first question, what am I going to measure? So what is that I really want to measure? So what could be your answer for this? So I can measure the performance. I can also measure the aptitude. I can measure the attitude. Now for many years, people, they used to say, you can't measure attitude. But then our behavior reflects, it influences our attitude. So through our behavior, our attitude, they might be reflecting. So, Therefore, when we are talking about what am I going to measure, we also need to think about what are our constructs? What am I looking at? What are the concepts that are emerged through my cons construct? So am I going to measure the attitude? Am I going to measure the aptitude? Or am I going to look into the performance? Or it is something else? The next question, which is very important, ki how am I going to measure it? This question is extremely important for us.
So this question is going to help you. The first question that is, what am I going to measure? That will give you the clarity. And the second question, which is connected to the first one, help you to answer some of the questions. So there can be devices to measure. There can be tests which are standardized. The devices, for example, when we are talking about the stress, there are a lot of stress measuring tools that are used by the psychologist. But if you go into the medical field or the nursing, they, they ask us to have the treadmill test. Now the treadmill is my device or it is the instrument. Now that instrument is going to give some data. So when the stress is measured by a nursing student using the treadmill test, so that data she is using for her research and therefore measurement of that particular aspect is related to that particular field. Now when the psychologists talk about the stress, they look into the behavior of an individual. So we may not find any instrument the way we find it in the physical sciences, but the stress can be measured by the psychologist by using different, different types of tests. Now these tests are standardized tests. They need to be interpreted in a specific manner. And that's the reason we do not claim ourselves as a counselor. Because we being the teacher, we keep saying, ki, okay, we counsel, but we do not have that thing in mind the way any counselor does the counseling. So the devices are in different, different forms what we have. Then we, we, we also have, when we want to talk about what, what are the opinion of people. So we, we have the opinion here with us. People, they can be interviewed by the researcher. At the same time, we also are in the process of documenting our observations. So it's a whole range of the tools that we have. So tools are the devices or they are the instruments that any researcher used to collect the information and that is related to her study. Now, another extremely important point here is that this tool is the one that is going to provide you the evidences. So on the basis of the information, 
what we are gathering, that is going to be the evidence. And on the basis of those evidences, we are further moving for interpretation. So therefore, it is very important that the tool which we are preparing or which we are using should be trustworthy, and the researcher also need to understand that every tool is going to have its own strengths and also limitations. Now, I think we can just have, you know, a bit of an interaction. So maybe in a chat box, if you can put, how do you differentiate between the tools and the techniques? So maybe you can just write your, your perceptions about the tools and the techniques. We'll wait for two minutes, you know, because it's difficult for us, you know, as a teacher, we are habitual of, you know, interacting. So um, is Dr. Karuna, is it okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm here, I'm here. No, I'm here. no, but is this okay? Yeah, yeah, absolutely okay, ma'am. Okay. So we have started getting the um, questions. Okay. I'll, just, I'll just pose the questions to you. I okay. have one question. Participants, as ma'am has said, please start posting uh, the questions. Um, yeah. Differentiate, yeah. What are your views about yes. the tools? Yes. How do you differentiate in the tools and the techniques? Yes, ma'am. We have one question. Shall I start posting, uh, posing to you, ma'am, on those questions? Yes, yes. Uh, yes, 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 yes one yes. question is, ma'am, um, techniques is the procedure of using a tool. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, second is tool is used to collect data. Techniques is the way tool is used. Uh, then we have tool questionnaires. Uh, techniques are uh, the methods, tools are the instruments. Okay. Techniques dash interview. Uh, tool is a means to collect data. Then we have uh, a device or implement tool. It's a device oh. implement, uh, especially one held in the hand, used to carry out a particular function. Technique, a way of carrying out a particular task, especially the execution or performance of an artistic work or a scientific procedure. Uh, another participant has um, written down tools are questionnaires. Opinion, interview, technique is the way tools are used. Okay. Then we have um, tool, device, or implement used to carry out a function. Techniques, a way of carrying out a particular task. Then we have, and techniques are the process, procedure. Uh, technique is like a plan of our idea and tools are the instruments. Tool is the document for the study that gives a measurement. Technique is the method of using the tool. Uh, then another participant has written down tools are the measuring instrument and technique way of using the tool. Uh, then example of tools are questionnaires, inventory, scale, interview, sheet, etc. Uh, technique is a way of using the tool. Tools are means to collect data. Okay. Uh, yeah. Then uh, I have yeah. received one more. Tools yeah, yeah. Uh, takes inputs and produces certain output. Okay. Uh, that's all. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for uh, for putting your uh, understanding uh, in the chat box. So thank you very much for that. So now majorly majority of you have very correctly say that. When we talk about the tool, it is the instrument, right? And uh, what is the technique? I'm, I'm is, sorry, yeah. one, one more has come. 
okay, uh, okay. and it is uh, written down tools and techniques are man made to handle things which would be an aid to himself okay i think so okay more. yeah uh tools are method of collection of data and technique is a process of research okay <laughs> okay yeah uh so thank you very much so let us <clears throat> as many of you have very correctly pointed out that when we talk about the tool it is the instrument and the technique it is how we are using the using this instrument but i just want to you know highlight one important point no matter your tool is good but if you are talking about the technique as a researcher we need to have some competencies and if we do not have those competencies then your tool what you are preparing will not give you the data what you are expecting so i think i can just recall dr usha ma'am's uh, thesis when she was working on the cooperative learning strategies and uh, we were saying ki group cohesiveness can be one of the you know variable what she can add into it so we were expecting you know like okay it's a group cohesiveness but the researcher when observing the groups then the researcher needs to be competent enough to perceive things what is happening to document it properly and at the same time should have the focus on what is to be observed but along with that the peripheral observation is also necessary so if we are talking about the interview if we are talking about the observation if we are talking about the sociometry if we are talking about the projective techniques so all these are techniques and if you just look into it you will find that all these tech techniques they demand some specific competency at the researcher part right so somebody has also talked about the interview agree so conduction of interview is a technique but for that i am going to prepare a tool which is known as the interview schedule correct so if i am a researcher and i am interested in conducting the interview i have to work at two levels i have to prepare my interview schedule well at the same time i have to equip myself as a researcher certain competencies so that i can get the adequate data otherwise if you just see that the interview schedule is same but the one person using the the schedule can collect a lot of data on the other hand the other person cannot collect that much of a data so as a researcher please keep in mind that if we are talking about or if we are going for the researches where we are uh, we are decided or we are deciding to take the interviews or we have to uh, observe the classrooms or the different sites in the in your our field so ensure that we are also analyzing our own own competencies i'm not saying that we can't do it we can but yes we need to enhance our competencies 
So when the tool say, for example, suppose, I want to measure the scientific attitude of ninth standard students and the tool is prepared by a professor which is which has a reliability established now if i am taking the tool i know ki, okay i have to administer the tool and the instructions are given on it so i just went and i have given the instructions were given I just asked them if there are any clarification for the instructions and then it was the self rating so students filled it up and I collected data I score it up. Now if my colleague goes. So she also follows the same steps. She will score. I will score the way it is given in the explanation by the by the developer. But if our performa of the interview schedule is same and we are taking the interviews, then it is all possible that she can collect more information as compared to me. And this is because the researcher has some specific competence. So that's where our tools and the, the techniques are, are different. So when we are saying that the observation is tool, no, observation is a technique as you people only have correctly pointed out. So then what is the tool? So my observation schedule will be my tool. Now this schedule, what am I preparing? It can be in a different, different forms. But the observation is a technique. Interview is a technique. So the interview technique expects some competence. Observation technique expect some some more competence if you want to go for the sociometry then sociometry will expect something more so suppose you are talking about the the association technique but then how am i going to interpret that So that needs some more competence at the researcher part. So the one point is very clear to all of us that the tools, yes, as we very precisely mentioned all of you that it is the device or it is the instrument that is used for the data collection. And the techniques is the way you say you are using it. But the techniques, I would say, they require some competence at the researcher part. And therefore, if we are using the projective technique or sociometry technique, or we want to take the interviews, please ensure, please ask question to yourself. If, okay, if I want to take the interview, what am I supposed to do? What, what competencies I need to have more? Because going just to a, in a class, administering one tool, collecting data and coming back, yes, fine. But if you are taking the interview, then you need to have some competence like establishment of the rapport, then your listening skills, and if you are going for the focus group interview, then that, that demands some more competences. So likewise, any technique, if you just take the technique demand some competence at the researcher part. So when we measure, we have specific and very accurate measurement instruments with us. And this accurate 
measurement instruments are used by people in different different setups now we being the teacher we use the students performance and the performance is usually in terms of their achievement in the different subjects besides this when we 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 want to measure some of the aspects of the students whether the students they are stressed or they are not stressed so we observe their behavior so the achievement test are going to give me the data regarding what can they do how much they can do but when i am looking into the stress i have to look into the behavior so while performing or while writing the paper if i see the students are restless or unrest or <clears throat> not feeling very comfortable these are the indicators that tells me that the students they are in stress or this xyz student is in stress so in those cases it is the behavior of an individual that is going to give me the indications regarding the stress so the way we look into the individual we look into the groups we also can talk about the stress level of particular group for the particular class and if somebody is interested to study the entire society a uh, 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 a small unit of a society or a community then the person needs to think on understanding the culture the way i look into the group dynamics in my class as a teacher my understanding i my observations in the community will be more challenging because when i'm observing the societies it's a complex city that automatically brings in so when i am observing my classroom it is more of a structured situation i do have but when i am observing the small groups in the community or community in particular area then i can do that but the complexity will increase and because the complexity increases my competencies what i have i have to enhance further i have to pull them right so similarly if i am taking the interview then i need to know about particular aspect say for example if if somebody wants to know the opinion of professors on the higher education now i should as a researcher know about the higher education system so unless i know about the higher education system or somebody wants to talk about the the teacher education so ensure that you know ki this is the thing what i have to and this is what it is 
this is how the UGC functions. And when I am collecting the, the opinion or the views of the experts on the higher education, I, I get it quickly. And also sometimes while conducting the interview, if I feel that I'm not able to get the, the sufficient information, then you may probe or you may have the supplementary questions. So that is how we actually expect that in a techniques, we as a researcher need some more competencies. But again, I repeat, I'm not saying that we can't do it. Okay. So when we are talking about the measurement of skill, I'm not just, this is just for the reference, I'm taking the slide that you all have done the measurement of skills in your masters, that is the nominal skill, the ordinal skill, interval skill, and the ratio skill. So when we talk about these skills, your measurement is a process of assigning the numerals using some rules. And I'm sure many of us are using the interval scale. And we know when we are talking about the interval scale, we think about the rating points and the scoring of it. So without talking much about it, as we all use this, these scales, we will move on to the further construction of the scales. Now in the quantitative type of researches, this, this is again, just a list of it. So we will just quickly go through it. So we do have the psychological test, we have achievement test, we have the rating skills. Now, as I said, again, your attitude scale can be your rating skills. So we, we use different types of rating skills. Then we can have the questionnaire, we can have the opinionaire, we have the checklist, we have the anecdotal records. So these are very commonly used tools in the researches. Okay, now, when we are preparing our tool, we are going to keep some certain things in our mind. And the first and the most important thing is our objectives. So what are the objectives of my research? Do I want to find out the academic stress level of the students? Or do I want to find out the exam stress of students? Do I have to find out the mathematics anxiety? So your research questions are very important. And that first thing that we have to keep in mind. So if my intention is to measure the academic stress, then in my mind, I'm thinking about all the academic activities a student goes through. If I want to specify it for the examination, then again, I'm looking into, it is the pre-examination, 
it is during examination and it is after examination because the exam stress doesn't get get over after the exam also be students they keep worried about the results right so they keep thinking about what will be my result what will happen what will happen if i don't get good marks and that's that's the reason so the exam stress is not only during the examination so i am looking into this exam stress that before the examination what is the stress the child is going through so it may be related to the preparation it may be related to if i have not understand i understood anything and now there is a exam so automatically my anxiety gets increases now there so i'm talking about the entire exam stress but it is again one more thing ki there are some students i don't want to do the entire exam stress i don't want to go for the academic but my i am a maths teacher and my interest is only to study the mathematics anxiety okay so stress which is associated with one subject and that is mathematics so now see my research objectives need to be extremely clear to me now what happens because of this we are very focused one thing we are very clear what are we doing and it also help us to avoid un unnecessary information so whatever information we require we collect that information and these research objectives they play very important role so if i am looking into the mathematics anxiety my statements or even if i want to go for the questions my focus will be only on the maths related activities i'll not go beyond that okay. now uh, the operational definition the second point i have to consider my operational definition when we will be talking about the construct that we that time i will we will discuss more about it i think all of you must know about it then what form of a data i am interested in do i want the in depth say for example do i want to just check the academic stress of the students or i further want to inquire about what are the reasons for this academic stress so naturally if i want to explore more i can't just end up with the rating scale because that rating scale will give me only the extent to which the students they have the academic stress so what form of a data i want so naturally if i want to go for the reasons and i want to find out more elements that are contributing to their academic stress so the best way is that along with at the first level if i am looking into the academic stress and further then probably i can select few students who are having the high stress and then i can actually talk or take the interviews talk to them and take more data about the reasons why do they feel so stressed out also i am a researcher and i want to look into why other people that all there are few students who are not having that much of stress 
so i am interested in that also so what will i do i will take some students from the those who who are low on the stress level and the one who are high on the stress level okay now so you are form of data what form of data you want of course it has a close connections with the research objective then our characteristics of our sample so when i am talking about the characteristics of my target sample i am going to look into their age i am going to think about their socio economic status i am also going to think about their competencies and the cultural background so when we are preparing the tool we have to consider all these aspects in mind and then prepare a tool so as an individual i measure the stress level of the 7th standard student and also the 10th standard students but if i am talking if i have to develop a tool for the 7th standard student i will have to make use of the language which probably they will understand so my statements which i am framing they will be short similarly the socio economic status also plays important role if if i am talking about the rural and urban area the the facilities which are available because if i am talking about the rural area or maybe i'm talking about low socio economic status then my statements which i am dealing with will be bit different because here what happens that resources are not available and that creates uh, academic stress that may not be the case with the higher strata of the society so it's not that the resources are not here the the when i'm dealing with the bmc students and i want to really study the stress level so then i may have to look into ki is it that the availability of the resources can lead to the academic stress so we need to think about it then of course as i say competency whether the, the the age group and the students will be able to understand and decode your language so if we are looking into the tools and suppose you are collecting the data from the student teacher you may make use of the word the pedagogies or you may talk about the kinesthetic intelligence and naturalistic intelligence but if we are talking if we are taking the data from the students of arts commerce science they may not be in a position to interpret the pedagogy or different pedagogical words what you the, which are very very you know has a special connection to our field so they may not be able to understand so it's not that they are not competent enough but you know understanding or decoding that particular language or maybe if some technical person comes to us and the person is talking uh, in a technical language we will get confused about it so try to have these things in mind and again by cultural background i'm saying that sometimes the data what is being collected from the different kinds of individual so our language should be very culturally responsive language so as a researcher we are going to take this care and we are going to keep these things in mind when we are talking about or when we are preparing our tool the characteristics of good tool now all of you know about it 
So a good tool has a validity. A good tool has well-established reliability. The good tool has the objectivity. Then it has a usability and adequacy. And it has the discrimination power. Uh, certain points I will cover here and validity, reliability, discrimination index, I'll be talking later. Now, when we talk about the objectivity, as we, we, uh, we, we say that the researcher needs to be very objective. Now, when we are saying that objective, it means we are not prejudiced. So we are unbiased. Our tool should measure what it intends to measure is validity. But the objectivity is if I give the tool and if I score it up, somebody else gives the same tool and scores it up, it is going to give me the same result. So if I have collected data from the seventh A, with the same tool or it is somebody else who is collecting using the same tool. The results need to be seen. So that is the objectivity of a tool. Now when we are talking about the usability of a tool, we talk about the, the administrative processes. when we are administering the tool, it should not be very complicated. Also, it should be cost effective. So when we look into the usability, usability basically focuses on the procedure of administering the tool. If it is very complicated, then automatically your respondent will not be in a position to give you the data what they want. The third point that is adequacy. We are preparing the tool to measure a specific characteristic or a specific trait. Is my tool measuring it in an adequate amount? This adequacy has a strong connection with our operational definition. So if you are a researcher and you are measuring a reading skill of the second standard students and the reading skills of the eighth standard student, your tool will differ. So if I want to measure the, the reading skills of the second standard two student, I will put in my definition that I'm expecting the student to read of five word sentence. I expect the child to read full stop or a comma. But if I'm going for the reading skill of the eighth standard student, I will expect the voice modulation, I'll expect the proper pronunciation, I'll expect the proper reading speed. So my tool will have all these components. Right? Now, if you people want five minutes break, 
Ms. Dr. Karuna, can we just give them five minutes break? Sure, ma'am. And then we can go for this validity reliability. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So we will be back in five minutes. Uh, ma'am, yeah. before we break for um, five minutes, hmm. uh, there is one question. Uh, yeah. Would you like to take yes. a question right yes, now? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So we have a question. Uh, uh, it is in the course of research, do we have to construct a tool or ready-made tools are available? A uh, very important question. Uh, to tell you very, very honestly, it is not necessary that we have to prepare a tool. Believe me, there are a lot of tools available, but only the thing is that you have to ensure whether it fulfills or suffice your purpose. So what you want to measure if it is reflected in that, please go for that, please. Because then you can utilize your this energy in writing one more paper. And I, I really appreciate this question for the simple reason, because what is happening, you know, everybody feels key. If I'm preparing a tool, then only I'm doing something in a PhD. It's not that, it's not that. And you will find there are a lot of tools which are available, especially those who are in a science and a maths teaching. Uh, so for the PISA, you have the wonderful tools and uh, you will really, you know, uh, amazed to see those tools that how they are measuring the scientific processes of the students. Beautiful tools they are in a pictorial form and uh, you, you will, and these tools, they, 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 they developed long back. I mean, long back means 98 Vagra. But still, you know, because if you just look into the Indian society, we have not still reached to that level when we are talking about the basic skills of the science, like the observation skills. Correct? So in that case, if you are tools, but study those tools, if it suffice your purpose, then please go ahead with that. It is not necessary that you have to. Another important point I am just I would like to make here, especially those who are in the nursing and all, uh, there is a huge data which is available. So our economic survey, if you just say look into it, our census report, all this data is abundantly available even for the education we do have the data which is available however this data is not being uh, utilized and it is not being interpreted see more and more researcher will look into the data everybody will look into that data from so different angle so when i'm looking into the data uh, like you know, I was just uh, doing some work for the IC report. And when I realized that 2014, ke in 16, mein, the, the higher education, mein, the girls enrollment ratio uh, enrollment has been dropped down. Now, further that, that you know, that uh, that motivated me, ki, okay, why it is 2016, what has exactly has happened that the girls enrollment in higher education has dropped down. And this is the IC report, it is something which is a reliable report for us, right? So All India Survey for Higher Education. Now, if you just look into, again, the every state, ki, in which state this uh, uh, there is a dropout in the enrollment of the girls in higher education, probably that will help us to explore more. And then you can connect ki aisa kya hua tha us samay, us state mein. Ki that leads to the dropping down the rate of enrollment in higher education because I feel that if the women's uh, enrollment is dropping down, it is something very alarming for the society. Right? So so then, you know, you can just look into it like that. Is it clear? So data is available. So if we can collectively come together and actually interpret it, but the further there is no inquiry into it. And I believe that if the people, they are, uh, you know, thinking like this and going ahead with this thought, why I uh, let me just go through and look into, peep into the data which is available. So yes, you can do that. Thank you. Ma'am, can I ask one question? Ma'am, yes. Uh, Lubna has a question and then Darshana also has raised her hand. Lubna, you okay. may Good, after good afternoon, ma'am. 
good afternoon, good afternoon lubna uh, ma'am uh, i would like to ask that um, i have attended webinars and where i have heard that you can take the ready made tools but it should not be old like 1998 yes. so what yes. do you have to say about that because yeah. ma'am recently whenever you uh, search uh, google scholar you usually get lot of material from the nursing section the hmm. nursing sector basically when you put education or whatever and when you want the ready made tools also you get lot of matter from the nursing uh, sector yeah. so i just want to know how old should be the tool ready made tool that we should take see actually when when people they are mentioning this that is correct that it should not be too old but at the same time certain things they say for example uh, uh, there is one tool by padaya and this tool he has established in somewhere 98 or something now this tool talks about the observation skills inferential skills of the students now these are some of the things that are fundamentals are not going to change right so if you are if you are measuring these kind of things then you can take up that okay but do one thing ki you again you take their permission and then you uh, you you hear on the indian context you establish its reliability okay and convey that ki you are establishing reliability in the indian and they usually give you permission and there are really good tools that's what i say ki if those who are in the science and the maths teaching they are actually blessed to have these kind of because science ka fundamental skills are not going to change right but why we are saying but uh, certain things which are changing very fast say for example if you want to talk about the digital literacy right so the even the 5 years old tool will not uh, is not sufficient today isn't it right ma'am yes lubna so wha- what are you measuring that is also very important i mean this will be my uh, submission to you for this okay. question but ma'am there are there are some tools which are so relevant to the objective that you have written yeah so what in that case if you feel ki it is relevant then you please establish its reliability in the indian scenario okay okay ma'am so means but, if we take up any tool we have to do a reliability tool in the indian yes. college yeah means because whatever when, cultural background uh, the uh, in a researcher is basically yeah it's because say for example as i say ki if you talk about the science and science related skill or for that matter if you talk about i think you are a language person uh, so if you are talking about the language skills right yes so fundamental language skills remain same hmm all right correct right mm. so if 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 you are looking into the language skills it is all possible i am just giving because i worked in the science so what i observe is that when they prepare the tool those tools they actually used with their 5th and 6th and 7th standard student and here those tool i am using for the 9th standard student mm-hmm. see they are they, they are developed countries right 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 and therefore their entire education system goes in a very different way as compared to us so when we actually calculated the reliability on the ninth standard students we conveyed them ki this is what we are doing and this is and you won't believe there are a lot of patients which our ninth standard students also were not in a position to really so that tool has discriminating power ki who is mm. having the more scientific attitude as compared to others okay so that discrimination power that tool has so mm. see if the tool has a the discrimination power then you can take it but ensure that you are writing to the person and taking permission and then go establishing reliability in the indian context now ma'am one example i'll give you psychological well being by carl Rip- mm. cliff i think so the her tool is or uh, that tool is very very apt to what we do mm. so mm. i had done a major research and i took permission from her but i didn't had to change anything because everything was relevant over yeah. there okay so you adopted that yes so i adopted that that's what ha but then did you ins- ensure that giving it on a small sample and ensure that yes even the respondent man ma'am since it was my uh, experimental design i did a pre test so from there i got to know like it was the questions were quite simple and it was understood and whenever i pick up a tool i also read up the material whether to which, which yeah. sample group is it uh, relevant yeah. to 
Yeah, uh, Lubna, just one thing uh, I would like to mention here. We all are researchers, so let us not assume thing ki, you know, language is simple. It, it is simple or we perceive it in that way because you are uh -huh. working in the field for so yes. many years. Right? Yes, so, uh, so, you know, being a, being a scientific person, it's always you give it for the testing. Okay. Your pretest okay. is different than you are testing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got. Yeah. I got to Thanks. learn something new, ma'am. That uh, we need to do this before we go ahead in order to yes. check out. Okay. Yeah. And Thanks. also, you know, it is contributing to their uh, credits as well. Ki their tool is being used in India, and then mm -hmm. you you have to convey that this is what we have done. This is our reliability, and reliability was conducted on so many, so many students, and this is how it is. Mm. And you know, like so. You know, it's also the credit uh, we are giving to them and also uh, they as a researcher uh, have the feather in their cap. Mm, right. Yeah? Yes. So it's more mutual. Yes, yes. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Darshana has raised yes. her hand. Darshana? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, Darshana. Uh, ma'am, uh, as we are discussing... Uh, um, uh, this, a standardized tool can be adopted in our research. That's what I came to know about it. But ma'am, a preparation of standardization tool can be one of the research. I mean, yes, uh, yes. I'll be, we, we are going to do that. <laughs> oh, it's okay. a very, very lengthy process. <laughs> Is it? You okay. have to ha yeah, you have to handle a very huge sample. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, I'm eager to know more about it, ma'am. <laughs> I'm eager to know even more about it. Like I found it very uh, interesting that you have to go through the validity, reliability, objectivity, and so other other characteristics. Yeah. You have to look for a good tool. Then why uh, uh, preparation of a good tool or standardized tool could be one of the uh, research, which will be beneficial even more, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, the future uh, prospect. Yeah, so okay. standardization tool, so usually people, they are saying na, ki, ha, we are using standardized tool. Let me be very honest and very frank. Ki, we actually, we validate kiya hua tool hum log istemal karte. That is not in a real sense standardized. Okay, okay let me okay. Be clarify that. And therefore, when you are going for the standardization of a tool, if you just see how the psychology people, they are doing it, they establish the norms and establishment of a norms itself is a big process. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Okay. You need to have a very huge sample in order to establish the norms. Okay, ma'am. Okay. okay. So okay. what we are, we all are using, we just say very casually, I use a standardized tool, but we don't use the standardized tool. We actually, after the reliability, we stop. Okay. Thank you. So we... Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, uh, last Thank you. one. Uh, yeah, no, go ahead. Uh, Atmaja, Atmaja, you are there. Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead. Uh, am I audible, madam? Yes, yes, yes Please go ahead. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Ma'am, I have a little silly kind of question, actually. <laughs> sometimes that happens when we, yeah, when we go through the tools, sometimes that happen uh, that the ready-made tool had some uh, part uh, of it, which is okay. relevant to our study. And hmm. the other part has, uh, means other tool has the other part. Hmm. So which is not of your yeah, use, right? Uh -huh. So then we can't enter the entire sakte. Correct. And the remaining uh, part that we need to do is available in any tool. Mein available hota hai. Oh. So in this situation, mein, if, if we are uh, using both of them, Mm -hmm. preparing a, a all together a new tool to kya hum aisa bol sakte hain ki we have taken the base from that ya wo kis tarah se hota hai no uh, see now i think the lubna talked about the adoption and now you are talking about the adaption of a tool okay uh, so here what uh -huh. uh, yes ma'am okay uh, uh, I will not be able to answer ki those tool hai isme se aadha lo copy paste wala thing but yes I can answer your question ki say for example you have taken one tool and some part of it it's you find it a useful and some you feel ki it has to be uh, it has to be modified right am I correct is my understanding correct Atmaja 
आई थिंक आत्मजा का डिस्कनेक्ट हो गया शायद डिस्कनेक्ट हो गया आत्मजा यस आई आई अगेन again again unpaired madam again unpaired yes, madam okay. yeah yeah, yeah. just uh, just clarify if i am wrong uh, my, what i understand from your question is that ki okay this is tool a and uh, the some part of the tool a is uh, relevant to your study and you have a tool b also and you have the some part from a b and now you want to uh, you know like mix them up correct Uh, now i as i said yes, right, i do yes, yeah i i don't know the procedure of it but i can tell you the procedure say for example there is a uh, there is a tool a and uh, you 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 find that some part is relevant to you but some part you want to modify is, am i clear i mean uh, is this is my uh, understanding is correct yes ma'am yes ma'am okay. yes ma'am yes, ma Okay, now in that case, you are thinking about the adaptation of a tool. Now, how to adapt the tool? So, first of all, whosoever is the developer of the tool, you have to write to that person. Ki this is my research. These are my objective. This is what I want to, and I would like to, you know, make some uh, changes in this. So that person has to give you permission. Okay. And usually okay, you get madam. it. Okay, madam. Understood, madam. Yeah, because Achha. many times what okay, happens in the in the contextuality. Say for example, like we were using one tool, and uh, the the all the names were very you know Spanish names. And if if we we when we tried with the uh, few tools, they were you know they could not get it. Because whether it is the name thing else. I mean, the town's name is or the person's name is kind of you know. So a lot of confusion was there. So in that case, what you can do, you can just give them a scenario. Okay, in India, these these are the names we use, and if we just change those names, what you have done, you have you have in your tool. With all due respect, I would like to just change this thing. So if you accept it kindly, uh, give me the permission. Okay. Ah, uh, many times you get the permission. Now, as a as a PhD scholar. or maybe as a researcher please make a note ki whatever the mail they are sending you ki okay you can proceed you can go ahead so please attach the copy of this mail in your thesis also okay madam when, yes yes also when you are writing about the tool give all these details ki why did you want to change it and then you are The permission and a permission letter you got and therefore you are doing it. So हम आप हमारे मन में आया इसलिए हमने नहीं किया. So जो author था उसका permission लेके हमने ये changes किए और कई बार ये होता है कि context की वजह से हमें ये थोड़े बहुत changes करने पड़ते हैं. Okay madam. Okay. Thank you so much ma'am. Thank you so. Okay. So any question but. pertaining to whatever we have done so far so ma'am malaik vichar aicha hota prashna yeah go ahead uh, good morning ma'am good morning ma'am mala vichar aicha hota jasa tumhi bolla ki sciences and sorry science madhe mathematics madhe tools ready as a right hmm to tyas pramane asa social science ke va economics yacha madhe pan tools ready astat ki ma'am ha economics madhe ata jar tumhi na financial literacy jar ghetlo म्हणजे मला जे काय माहिती आहे त्याच्यावरून मी बोलते तर फायनान्शियल लिटरसी साठी बघा आपल्याकडे एनआयएसएम आहे तुम्हाला माहिती असेल आणि एनआयएसएम इज कंडक्टिंग द टेस्ट ऑन द फायनान्शियल लिटरसी सो दे डू हॅव द स्टँडर्डाइज टेस्ट म्हणजे हा बोला सोशल सायन्स म्हणजे हिस्ट्री वगैरे साठी असतात ना तू मला हिस्ट्रीच वगैरे तेवढं काही माहिती नाही आहे पण पिसा वगैरे कस ना इंटरनॅशनल लेवलला ही काम सुरू आहे तर त्याच्यामुळे ह्याच्यामध्ये मी अगदी तुम्हाला शंभर टक्के सांगू शकते हिस्ट्रीच्या संदर्भामध्ये जर तुमची काही हिस्ट्री असोसिएशन आणि सोसायटीज असतील ज्या ऍट द इंटरनॅशनल लेवल इफ दे आर डुईंग समथिंग सो प्लीज चेक आउट विथ दे कारण स्टेम कस कि सायन्स टेक्नोलॉजी आणि मॅथमॅटिक्स साठी काम करताना आता ते स्टीम झालेलं आहे सो 
आता त्याच्यात त्यांनी आर्ट आणि हे पण ऍड केलंय सो इट्स पिसाच्या सगळ्या साईट आर व्हेरी गुड यू कॅन जस्ट स्क्रोल थ्रू ऍक्च्युली ओके चालेल मॅम मी ते चेक करते थँक यू सो मच मॅम एनी अदर क्वेश्चन ओके सो वी विल जस्ट मूव्ह अहेड now the first thing that uh, probably do you might be knowing about this thing but i will still you know like just refresh so the first step what we do is we identify our construct now what are these constructs so as we know these are the imaginations of the experts and they cannot be directly sensed through your sense organ so i'll just keep taking one example and go ahead so suppose i want to measure the interest now interest is you know it's a construct it is something that has emerged through the expert's mind now if i start thinking on the interest then it is the interest in something right so now we are teachers so being a science teacher i would like to know interest in science now being being a history teacher the history teacher might like to work on the interest in history so my main construct is interest so what i have to do is that in order to identify my construct the most important thing is that read about it now when we are reading about it so what i am looking at because my variable is psychological variable interest so i will be looking into the interest which is defined by the psychologist i will read theoretical aspect about how the interest can be inculcated what is interest how this understanding of interest has been uh, established over a period of time uh uh just social science uh, somebody was asking me the question about social science right ek sip quickly yaad aaya isliye bata rahi hu see there are some researches which are going on and these researches are conducted by hakman and she worked on the social justice in classrooms okay so just see if you that can help you will get lot of her articles written very well and uh, it's it's very important to look into when we are talking about the social sciences and we are dealing with very abstract concepts like uh like equity equality and all those kind of stuff okay so sorry for that so even if you just say so justice it's it's it's, it's a construct so interest so interest is a construct now i i read about the interest i i see the lot of uh, definitions what what people they are writing about it what people they are saying about it so then my understanding of that interest get widens so basically your theoretical understanding plays very 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 important role so it's it's to any researcher the first step is you know you are you are reading about what you want to study is very very important now once you know then you go for operationalizing the construct now how do i operationalize the construct so i think about the dimensions of it now when i am saying or i want to look into the interest in science so what elements i am looking at because when i am saying interest in science i will have to think about some of the behavior of the students that will indicate me that the students they have the interest now what are those activities i can think of so i am looking into the dimensions so one thing is the students participation in the class science class okay the second students reading about the science books or the science phenomena whatever the third component the student by herself take up the process or discusses with student uh, with her uh, classmates as well as the teachers okay so now i have decided the dimensions 
Now, once I am clear on this, because interest, you know, other person, like if Karuna Madam wants to look into the interest, she might have her different definition about it. Or again, I'm going back. When I'm looking at the interest in science of seventh standard student, that will be different from the interest in science of a graduate student or the third year student, correct? So when we are thinking about the construct, we are actually looking into all these aspects. Now, keeping in mind those dimensions, you also have to think about what you want to, which kind of a tool you want to prepare. Okay, go, go, go back our earlier slide. How am I going to measure it? So once my understanding about my construct is clear, I proceed further with the thinking, which type of a tool I want. Do I want to go for the rating scale? Do I want to go for the questionnaire? So decide what we want to go for, because that is going to give you the further directions. Now, right now we will just take one example of the rating scale and we will go ahead. Later we will, we will discuss about the other one or two. Then considering the dimensions of the interest in science, I will create pool of items. So I will keep writing the statements. Now here, very, very important points. You have to think about your rating points. And your rating point should match what you are measuring. So if my definition of interest is the extent the student is participating in the science class in different activities, comma, take up science projects and discuss with the teachers and the classmates. Read about the different phenomena that are happening. So my definition is clear. Okay? I am measuring the interest with these three dimensions. Now, because I'm measuring the interest and I say it is the extent of the participation. So naturally, my rating points will be either the extent to a very large extent, to a moderate extent, very small extent, and no, not at all. Or I can talk about the participation always, frequently, rarely, very rarely. Is it clear? So your rating points are very, very important. I will not go for whether you agree or disagree. I will not go for that scale from strongly disagree to strongly agree. I will not go for. Why? Because I'm measuring interest. I want to look into to what extent the student is participating in the science related these activities, which I have already operationalized. Okay. Because if I if I, I put strongly agree, disagree, and if I if I ask the question, I, I read science related article. So that agree disagree scale will not match. If the student is reading always, then naturally indicates the high interest. So therefore, please make it a point when we are creating the pull of item at the same time think about 
the rating points. Okay. Now, again, when you are operationalizing, try to have a crystal clear thoughts of yours. If somebody is measuring any skill, so divide it into the sub skills. So that it automatically will help you to, to write your items. Now, again, you can have some positive and you can have some negative statements. So usually the question people they have is that should we have a 50-50? So there is no, it's not necessary. You need to have 50-50. Usually we go for the 60-40 as well. But make sure that your negative statement is not like this. For example, okay. I enjoy science class. This is the first statement, okay? Always, sometimes, rarely, not at all, okay? Now the next, if, if you just write ki negative statement karna hai, iske liye if I'm writing, I do not enjoy, no. It is not correct. Don't do that. Instead of that, what I will say, in science period, I enjoy watching outside the window. Correct? This is negative statement. Because if the child or if the student is enjoying watching outside, it means not interested in the science. Okay? So please... Whenever you are making tools, please take care that you are not preparing the statements like this. Okay, ki ek bar enjoy kiya hai, ek bar usi statement ko aap do not karke dal. Please don't do that. Okay, so that likewise you will have the pool of and all this pool of items. Whatever the statements you are preparing, please ensure that they are matching your operationalized. Then the next step is you go for the validity. Now the tool are set to be valid when they measure what they intend to measure. So if I am interesting in measuring the interest in science, my statement should show that The student is discussing about the science. But if I write the statement like this, science help any country to develop. See, that shows the attitude towards science. Is the difference? So when I'm saying ki science help, in the development of country. So that is my attitude towards science. It is not my interest. My interest will be, I like to... to conduct experiment rather than sitting idle. Yeah, uh, Dr. Karuna, am I not audible? Because my uh, net no, is saying right that now, I am answered. No, no, no. Right now, you are very much audible. Beach me okay. just for a minute. Just ha. for a minute, you were not audible. Okay. Ha. Because right now, the, audible. Okay. That's why I just uh, put off my video camera. No, anyway. no. Now you are so, very much audible. Very much okay. Audible. Because I was getting the messages. Anyway, thank you. Sorry. Okay. So... Uh, when we are talking about uh, the, the validity, so 
your statement should measure what you want to measure. So if, the, if you want to measure the interest, your statement should be like that. And believe me, it happens that sometimes when you are preparing the statements for interest in science, you, you come out with the statements that indicates the attitude. It, it happens with all of us. So in spite of, you know, working in the field for so many years, it happens. So don't worry about it. It happens. We all are human beings. We have all the right to make mistakes. But the point is that we need to learn from the mistakes. So when you, when you actually look into your own tool, then you realize, oh my God, this is the statement that, that goes more toward attitude and not the interest. So you create a pool of items. And after that, when you are going to, when you are going further for establishing validity, which is very important step. So we have the content validity, we have the construct validity, we have the predictive validity, and we do have the uh, concurrent validity. Now, this validity is to be established on the basis of what tool we are using, okay? Uh, I'm just sorry for this slide because some something went wrong and I could not change the font. But anyway, for, the, for our explanation, I think these things are okay. Now we discuss about what is construct. So are my statement are aligning with the construct? Whatever the theories of interest, are my statements aligned with it? Then even we go for the content validity. Now content validity, whenever you are giving it to the experts for the validation of a tool, make sure that you are giving your operational definition to them. Because that will help the expert to to establish the content validity of your tool. So what we do, we look into your operational definition first. We try to understand, okay, you want to measure the interest in science with these parameters because you are dealing with seven standard. And then we try to match that with your statements. Okay, so the content validity has to be established. Now, if you are preparing the achievement test, that is the must. When you are giving the tool for the content validity achievement test, please give the blueprint as well. All of you know how to prepare the blueprint. So along with your achievement test, please share the blueprint with the experts so that they can make the necessary corrections and they can give you the proper inputs. The next one is the predictive validity. Now the predictive validity is established for the test which are going to predict the future. So all our entrance test have I need to have the predictive validity. It means the test has a power to talk about whether the student who passes this entrance test will be able to complete this course or no. The predictive validity is established for those kind of tools that are going to predict about the future. Your aptitude test also needs to have the predictive validity because aptitude test talks about, okay, you have the good numerical ability, you have the aptitude for this thing, so you may go for this, 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 this career so that that particular test has a power actually to predict about your future so you will be able to do well in the fields which are associated with the numbers the concurrent validity the concurrent validity is helpful to establish 
actually the construct validity of a tool wherein what we do is that uh, we give the taste to the student. Say, for example, suppose there is one test which is developed by the PISA and uh, interest in science. So I'm giving that test to the students I'm, and I'm also giving the test which I am developing. Okay, and then I will see the correlation between these two. So these are the validity that we establish for the tool. Now, after you get the feedback from the experts, you make the changes, you discard some of the statements, you modify as per the instructions given by the experts, and then you proceed further. You go for the pre-pilot testing, and for the pre-pilot testing, you have to give it to the sample. Again, if we are dealing with the statistics, so therefore magic number is minimum 30, 3030. So if I am preparing the tool for interest in science for seventh standard student, I will be giving it to one class of seventh standard. Now, one class like in ensure karna hai minimum 30 to chahi hum logo ko because we are using the statistics. The next step is item analysis. Usi ko hum logo ne bola tha discrimination index. So your tool must have the ability to discriminate between the students who are having the high interest in science and the low interest in science. If you are working for the job satisfaction, your tool must have the power to, to discriminate between teachers with high job satisfaction and a low job satisfaction. High stress level, low stress level. High self-efficacy, low self-efficacy. So our tool, whatever construct we are considering and what we want to measure, our tool should have that power. And in order to do that, we go for the item analysis. So we carry out the item analysis to calculate discrimination index. Now this discrimination index will give me an idea which statements I have to keep and which statements I have to discard. Okay, I think probably you must be knowing, but quickly let me go through it while doing it. How do we go? So what we do for the item analysis, interest in science tool I developed, I have given it to the experts. So I started with maybe uh, 60 statements or 50 statements, whatever. After the validity, I left with you know, 40 statements, right? Now, I have given it to one class, seven standard, and there were suppose 100 students. Now I will score all 100 forms, <clears throat> and I will give them marks. Now I have to arrange it on the basis of the marks they got. So suppose I have, I am arranging it in a ascending order or descending order. Then I will have to take the 27% upper and the 27% lower. The, the bundle which is left that I will keep aside. 
Now magic number 27, again the statistician they have given those 27 percent upper or high scorer and 27 percent low scorer. Now item analysis is to be carried out for every statement. So you will be putting their marks, the high achievers and the low achievers, and then you will analyze whether your item, uh, sorry, the discrimination index, if it is less than 0 0.2, So, uh, sorry, if it is more than 0 0.2, you accept the statement as it is. If your discrimination index is between 0 0.18 to 0 0.2, then you look into the statement and you just modify it. And while doing so, you can go back to your expert's comment. So sometimes it may happen that, you know, that particular word is not... Uh, you know, clicking to the students and therefore they are not able to answer or respondent. But if the statement with a lower than discrimination index 0 0.18, you have to discard it. Don't take those statements. And that's why you create, you have to pull off items. Koop sare items aapko banane hai, jitne aapke operational definition ke saath match hote hai, utne. If your statements are good enough, they will stand here also and here also you will have a very less number of statements that are discarded okay now so suppose i had the 50 statements after the validity i left with the 40 now again in discrimination index when i analyze my items again i lost maybe another 12 or 15 Right, so 50 the, 40 ho Now suppose I'm left with 30 or 28, whatever. Now again, what will I do? I will take that and I will again go in the field. I will give it to the another seven standard student, not the same one, okay? Another seven standard student. I'll administer my tool. Again, I will go to the scoring. Now, whatever number of students I have, I'll be giving it and every tool I'm now considering. So each form what I have, I'm going to consider to establish the reliability. Now, when we are establishing the reliability, we actually talk about the different types of reliability which is established. So the first one is the parallel form of reliability. So what we do here, say for example, you want to study the student's achievement in the waste management. You, you dealt with the topic by innovative method and you want to study it. Now what happens in a pre-test, we give them the test, right? And after our treatment, again, we give them the test. Now we are lucky enough to have a memory. So that pre-testing effect might be there. And therefore what we do, especially in case of the achievement test with the same blueprint, we make the two question papers. But the form of the question will be different. The weightage and the distribution in terms of the objective, in terms of the marks will remain same. Only the question form will be different. So it say for example, like I am asking about something with the fill in the blanks in 
question paper set number one. Now the same question in the set number two, I'm asking in the match the column. So the blueprint is same, weightage is same, everything is same, only the forms are different. So one test I'll be using at the pre-test and the second set I'll be using at the post-test. Now, you once you give those, both the tests to the group, you find out the correlation. If the correlation is high, it has the high reliability. Now, when we are preparing the observation schedules, for the observation schedules, we establish the inter-observer reliability. Now you prepare the observation schedule. We'll just take the example because we have all gone through the VA. So suppose lesson observation, you have your pro forma of evaluation. Now this pro forma, which is prepared by you, it has some specific components related to teaching. Once you have done with the validity, what can you do is that this particular tool which you prepared is to be given to two members. So say for example, you are the one and maybe your friend, your colleague, is there. So you are observing the same lesson with the same pro forma. So one student performing and two observers are observing. Sometimes we go for the three observers as well. Now I had, say for example, I had 30 students of science and maths and all these 30 students lessons are observed by me and my colleague. So each student has two sets of marks given by observer one and observer two. Then we will calculate the correlation between the marks given by observer one and observer two. More is the uh, correlation more reliable our tool is. So this is used usually where you want to rate the performance. So if tomorrow you want to rate the, the dance performance and you have some criteria, so take two people, you observe and then you decide. The next one that is the split half method. Now, when we are preparing a tool, please make sure that you are not keeping all positive statements in one lot and all negative. No, you have to mix it up. Now, in the split half method, we calculate the scores gained by the students on odd number of statements and the even number of statements. Okay. And then now you again have the two sets. So suppose I'm the respondent, you have the my score in the odd number of statements, my score in the even number of statements. So likewise, you will have for the entire class and you will calculate the correlation. The next one that is the cron badge alpha, the cron badge alpha. Uh, usually we prefer if, if in PhD, you can go for the two methods of establishment of reliability and the cron badge. Usually we, we, we insist our students are using this. So along with any other, any of this, we insist to use the cron badge alpha. Now, in cron batch alpha, your each statement, its score is taken up. We calculate its mean, its SD, and then we calculate the SD score. We put it in a one formula of the cron batch. It is, it is given everywhere you will get that formula. And again, that gives you the 
reliability value. Higher is the value, reliable is your tool. Please make a note your reliability value will not exceed one. The better reliability is more than 0 0.7. The more you move towards one, more reliable your tool is. So if you are getting the reliability like 0 0.82, 0 0.85, your tools are very reliable. So it means the the inference, the, the conclusion and the inferences what are coming through your tool, they are trustworthy. You can rely on it. Now, after this, we prepare the final form of our tool. So where there you mention, this is the tool that measures interest in science. It has 28 statements, out of which, these many tools are positive, these many the statements are positive, these many statements are negative, and you write the scoring of it. This is the scoring of it. So you score, you give the scoring, and you this is where you be now. Final form of our tool is ready. So with this final form, we enter in the field and we collect the data. So that is enough, but the counselors and the psychologists, when they are using the tools, they are judging, and rating and mentioning and evaluating the aptitude. And they are talking about the abilities one can have and where the one person can go and where person can have a good career. Now for those, there are the further step and that is the establishment of norms. Now, as somebody was pointing out that establishment of a norm in itself is a PhD work. Now, till this you have done and you go in a field, you collect data, you come back and as per your uh, objectives, you, you then you if you have your hypothesis put forth you further proceed with your descriptive analysis and then the hypothesis testing but now if somebody wants to establish the norms then the person has to go in a field and ensure that the huge data is collected so maybe 4000 5000 students And after that, we calculate the norms. Now these norms, they are the age norms, they can be the gender norms, they can be the grade norms. <clears throat> The statistical techniques are used by different people are different. So even within a group also the norms can be established. So I think you probably may be knowing about the percentile and the percentile ranks that are calculated. So that is very common technique which is used. But say for example, you have given this interest in science say to 4,000, 5,000 students 
of standard seven that now you want to establish the norms. So you will take all the data of that 4,000 students and then you will calculate the Stanine scores. And on the basis of that Stanine scores, for the particular age group, you will talk about the interest level. So suppose you have collected data from the seventh standard and the eighth standard. So there will be a range you will get the students they will be having. So everybody is not exactly the 13 years. Now your norms will, once you, you administer this, tool to the, to the students, then you will be able to talk about on the basis of the age norms. So here as a researcher, you will not only establish, but you will have to prepare a detailed manual of it. How you have calculated the norms, how these norms need to be interpreted. Right? Uh, I'll just quote very simple example. We had a very well-known pediatrist, Dr. Anand in JJ Hospital many years ago. Now, when he had to establish the norm, specifically I'm talking about uh, the speech uh, part of the child development. So the, when, you, when you talk about the speech, and you want to talk about the developmental uh, milestone of a child, the speech as a developmental milestone, you have to establish the norms. Now the doctor worked for many years and then he established. See, the, the other doctors across globe, they have, but when you talk about these norms, your uh, Tamil is not be spoken in the same way the Marathi. So the norms can be different for the each language also. So uh, Dr. Anand worked on this speech, which we consider in our this thing, the developmental milestone when we deal with the special children. So what he talked about is that, say for example, he has established the norm. He, if the child is of eight to nine months, so he's not saying exactly eight months. So he says eight to 10 months should be able to utter single letter or two letter syllable. Then 12 months to 15 months. So likewise for the month he has calculated. Now that becomes the standard for us to decide the strategy for develop the, the, the child's vocabulary or uh, the speech. So if the child comes to the counselor and she, she finds that the child is one year and still not able to babble, so then her first step is to take some decision so that the child will babble. So then her therapy starts there. So Dr. Anand has given us this particular speech development charts, and these are the standard for us. So, hum log unko dekke, fir hum log judge karte rehte hai. so likewise, we do have the establishment of the norms everywhere. Okay, only the thing is that it requires the huge sample. Say, for example, you do have these norms when you talk about your hemoglobin level. So, you will find always it is given in a range. That if it is a female, her hemoglobin level should be from 12 to 14. If it is a male, it is something like 10 to 11. So it's in a range. Now what we do, you, we test our hemoglobin and then you know we, we, we compare against these standards, right? 
एंड देन वी डिसाइड कि मेरा हीमोग्लोबिन ज्यादा है या कम है या वॉट एवर है सो इफ इट इज माई हिमोग्लोबिन इज नाउ सेवन एंड द एक्सपेक्टेड इज यू ट्वेल्व टू फोर्टीन इट मीन्स मेरा बहुत कम है सो नॉर्म्स आर दिस बट दे आर टू बी एस्टेब्लिश ऑन अ bigger population bigger sample size you just can't have uh, a small sample size to do that so the techniques are t tests z scores t9 scores they are they are uh, calculated and on the basis of that the we establish the norms okay now so when we talk about the tools we know we develop the test or we develop the scales or we have to go for the inventories right so i think all of you know the difference in the test scale and interval uh, and inventory quickly so what the test measures what the scale measures and what the inventory measures test measures the knowledge okay so it is the ability okay scale is your the scale is a attitude of scale. perception and all hmm. okay so your manifestation of certain things right and inventory attitude interest scale please yeah attitude skills interest skill and inventory we keep we keep uh, hearing these no inventories you know these psychologists they are using this inventory that inventory right inventory batteries we have okay so yeah so basically uh, when madhulika yeah. has written down test hmm. knowledge present scale extent to trait uh, present inventory hmm. is like checklist okay good okay so inventories they are used by the psychologist so they measures majorly your personality traits personality right okay so if you just look into it you will find that the tests are measuring your abilities to do certain things the scales they measure your manifestation of your some uh latent constructs and the inventory they measure your personality traits okay and therefore you will find that majorly with the, the psychologists they use a lot of inventories because they they are they are going to comprehends and they are going to talk about your personality and they are giving you the picture what you have the good in you and what what are the limitations and all those kind of thing so they want to have it in depth and therefore the inventories okay so with that thank you very much and now i think we can have some time for the question answers thank you so much uh, um uh, is it inventory only is uh, limited to personality traits majorly it measures the personality trait and uh, if you just if you find the inventories the inventories are not like our rating scales they are quite depth in depth yes uh, and also within the inventory also you have you know a set so inventory battery they call it yes yes ma'am so within that also they just try to ensure ki whether you have this thing or no yes uh, thank you ma'am uh, 
Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, we have one question. Shall I read it for you, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Darshana ma has asked this question. Norms and moderate variables, oh. are they same? No, I, I could not get her question. Yes, Darshana, Darshana can you elaborate? Darshana, Darshana are you there? Darshana? I don't know, maybe Darshana has dropped out. Okay. Um, okay. If she comes back, we will ask Darshana only then. Okay. All right. I but otherwise, question, if. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah ma'am, I, I want to know that when we have a small uh, sample size, very unique, for example, in special education field, if I'm looking at the uh, effect of a module on. Um, you know, um, for children uh, in, in a primary grade, let's say, uh, in an inclusive setup where uh. there are children with ASD, now hmm. my tool to be used cannot be given to a large sample to have a validity and, Correct. you know, so yeah. how do I go about it then? Yeah. So in this case, the first thing is that since your sample itself is a very limited sample, I would say, right? Yes. Your population is also population now is automatically the first thing is very clear that you will have to have the observation schedule with you, right? Yes. Right. You can't go for the rating skill because yes. uh, self-reporting rating skill is not possible only, right? So if you are going for the observation schedule, mm -hmm. go for the inter-observer reliability. Okay, so you okay. are observing the child, you ask your another colleague or a friend to observe and then you see whether your scores are matching or no. Here the intention is that what meaning the one person is taking, whether the same meaning is conveyed to the other observer or no. Okay, yeah? okay, yeah. But also there are other components yeah. to this research. You know, I have attitude yeah. scale, attitude of teachers yeah. in using a particular module <laughs> to teach special needs children. Yeah. Again, okay. for that also, well, yeah. Okay. Now, in this case, because what happens, you know, uh, if you are going for the questionnaire, okay, mm. so it's better you go for a dry run. So in dry run, what we do, we do not go for the sample of 30 but we mm -hmm. may go for the sample of five. Now okay. here, our intention is to ensure that your respondent are able to give you the response. Okay. So they understand what language you are using, then the sequencing of the question, because every tool has its own uniqueness. So likewise, yes. we today discussed only about the rating scale because it is very widely used. But uh, if you are mm -hmm. going for the a questionnaire. So in questionnaire, mm -hmm. your questions, uh, question again related to the objectives and your uh, operational definitions are must, no doubt about it. But the type of questions mm -hmm. you are asking, then the sequencing in the questions, mm -hmm. that is going to influence your respondent. So ensure that you are giving a very small group, maybe five, six. Okay. So that you as a researcher are, are, uh, are developing a tool in a scientific way. Otherwise, tomorrow it may okay. happen that you say, ki, okay, nahi, sample kam hai, isle mein panch ko bhi nahi karna thi. So then later you may face a problem. Because mm -hmm. here, the pre-pilot and pilot testing are conducted only to ensure that uh, if there are any problems later. So you basically try to uh, understand the problems that might come in your data collection. So in order to avoid those problems, we go for the pre-pilot and pilot testing. Okay, okay. Pre-pilot and pilot is different. Yeah, pre-pilot, usually we go for the rating skill, pre-pilot and the pilot, but in your case, you can go for, if you develop a questionnaire, you go for the pilot testing, mention that you have given to maybe five, six, seven uh, yeah. teachers and then, you just check how they are responding. It may happen that you will find that one question is not answered by anybody. So then yeah. for the query, ki why it is not being answered? Is it mm. the question has some limitation? Or is it some word has some limitation? Or is it something else? Right. Okay. And, and, yeah. 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 And in that case, you can go back to those five respondents and you can talk about it. That is also can be done. 
ओके वंडरफुल वेरी गुड थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच क्लियर थैंक यू प्रज्ञा मैम मैम देर इज वन क्वेश्चन सुष्मिता हैज रिक्वेस्टेड यू मैम काइंडली एक्सप्लेन स्केल अगेन प्लीज स्केल जी ओके सो टेस्ट एंड स्केल एंड इन या so when we talk about the test we say that it is the our ability <clears throat> uh, or our competencies that is measured by the test now when you are talking about the scale the scales they are our uh, manifestation of our construct so say for example interest in science or my attitude towards something so these are my predispositions and the scales measure that now further if i want to go for the inventory the inventory is very in depth so only my this superficial manifestation will not work here so the inventory has a set of test within it and then that actually gives whether it is my personality trait or it is not my personality trait so the scales measure your attitudes your interest but it is your manifestation of those things of your different different constructs what we have so it can be your motivation for learning it can be your you are you are you are perception about your own uh, efficiencies right so it it is possible that i may you know i may say ki nahi i am very interested in uh, this thing and that thing. but if 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 the interest inventory is given to me so in interest inventory may tell me ki you no know, you, you are you are not interested in you know your personality trait is not to go for the uh, the subject which are associated with the 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 technical things you are more towards you know uh, a human uh, person so you may go more for this uh, humanities so that happens because what happens your attitudes might get influenced by your environment around Yeah, uh, I hope I uh, I answer the her question, Shushmita. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma yeah. Yes, Thank you so much, uh, ma'am. I was thinking yeah. okay, that khatam ho gaya. But one more question has come. Uh, yeah. So yeah. That that says uh, while scoring the items on our research tool, how hmm. do we assign a score for free text responses? yeah i see for the free text responses uh, uh whose question is this i just want some more explanation from the person radhika radhika has asked this question yes yeah radhika can you please elaborate what you want so that you know uh i just, whatever you know i am perceiving whether i am perceiving it correctly or no can you please elaborate it yes ma'am so uh, i have prepared a research tool uh, to assess self perception Uh, uh towards a uh, responsible environmental behavior hmm. and uh i have uh, in my tool i have you know many uh, scales and you know uh, agree disagree those kind of questions but there are a few free text questions that uh you know what kind of uh, uh, items do you think is uh, you know something like what is your opinion about <laughs> or uh, or uh, okay yeah so, so you have some... find a numerical uh, score. uh how do i score it okay now i think you are you are part of your uh, tool is the opinioner uh yes ma'am few items yeah. yes few test few items. items yes few, yes. few yes. test items and what are you measuring i'm measuring self perception self perception about a uh, responsible environmental behavior okay so uh, here you are your topic itself is like this ki you, you want them so in that connection what can you do you may be having the rating scale first right yes. and then you have some open ended question yes. so in that open ended question you try to analyze ki whether that behavior what the person is writing or telling you does it go in the the context of uh, 
रिस्पॉन्सिबल बिहेवियर ओके से फॉर एग्जाम्पल जैसे यू टेक एनी प्रोबेबली यू माइट बी गिविंग एनी एग्जाम्पल टू देम एंड हाउ हाउ विल यू बिहेव इन दिस पर्टिक्यूलर केस सो यू लुक इन टू की वेदर द बिहेवियर इज गोइंग वेरी क्लोज टू द हाई रिस्पॉन्सिव हाँ एक्सपेक्टेड बिहेवियर इन अ वेरी हाई रिस्पॉन्सिव रिस्पॉन्सिबल बिहेवियर एनवायरमेंटली और इट इज इट इज नॉट सो ओके ओके सो लुक इन टू दैट फ्रॉम दैट एंगल तो वो एक स्केल धार में लेके यू 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 एनालाइज इट और यू कैन हैव यू नो यू कैन हैव द टू पार्ट ऑफ इट वेन यू आर एनालाइजिंग वन इज यू नो द रेटिंग स्केल यू ऑलरेडी हैव एंड देन यू कैन हैव द ओपिनियन एयर एज द अनदर पार्ट ऑफ एनालिसिस बिकॉज दैट कैन गिव यू द क्वालिटी दैट्स रीजन आई आस्क यू वेदर यू आर गोइंग फॉर द कोडिंग ऑफ वॉट यस 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 मैम थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम uh thank you pradnya ma'am uh i think from the chat box there are no questions now i can okay. see that appreciation messages of appreciation for you ma'am uh thank, thank you, you so much for very informative session uh it was a wonderful ex uh, explanation patient explanation so there are many 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 messages of appreciation okay. and we thank you very much thank you everyone thank you ma'am that is all from my side that's all from my side but i think we have couple of questions in the whatsapp group also okay, and okay. i hand over it to now my colleague dr borkar uh yeah. over to you dr borkar uh thank you dr sina so ma'am there are two questions on the whatsapp yeah. group so the first question is if a researcher made tool is available on shodh ganga appendix section of the researcher's thesis then yeah, oh, oh, usha we... madam yes uh i think i am not able to uh, hear you to prop can you please adjust microphone yeah hello uh, yeah. yeah am i audible now, now? it's clear yeah, yeah. yes Thank yes you. now audible yeah so ma'am i'll repeat the question the question is if a researcher yeah. made tool is available on shodh ganga appendix section of the researcher's thesis do we need permission to use the tool from the researcher and if yes then how do we contact the researcher because the email id isn't available that's the first question ma'am okay uh, here it's a matter of ethics that is first thing and it's uh, it's always better that you are either contacting the university if you are not getting connected to that person and i'm sure if you can uh, contact the departments and the university they probably can help you out to give you the address and de details about it yes thank you ma'am uh, ma'am the second question is a stress scale mentions about stress while studying science subject in few items but i require the tool for measuring stress while studying mathematics is it okay to use the tool just by changing the subject from science to maths uh no i would not say that because uh, when we talk about the maths anxiety it is something very different than compared to science because the nature of both the subject is very different uh also as per my understanding usually the maths when it is taught by the teacher uh, uh it's it's very you know basically the mathematics or the numerical field is a predominantly the male dominant uh, uh, field and therefore uh, we may be competent enough to do that but culturally we have been brought up that uh, we we have the doubts on our own selves when it comes to the maths uh, being a woman Uh, so you know you you, you uh, it will be you know my suggestions not to make use of the same thing because mathematical thinking is extremely different from what thinking you require for science uh, thank you ma'am uh, i think uh, darshana uh, has put this question again on the whatsapp hmm. group okay. norms and moderate variables are they the same okay uh, i think she is because she probably got confused because i talked about the age norms gender norms so no they are not same uh, 
they are when you are taking it as the moderating very well this is what is my understanding of darshana what you put the question but my understanding is that you talk about them as a variable but when you are talking about it as a variable so ye yeah, then you are just using it as a nominal skill say for example you are taking the age and on the basis of age you are comparing their interest in science right but that is not the norms the norms will talk about the students from the age group 13 to uh, 14 or maybe they it, to be more precise they will talk about 14.5 or something will have this this much is the score which is expected so the norms are different and moderate variables are different moderate variable you you basically take to to classify and for the for the further analysis and test your hypothesis yes ma'am uh, clear thank you so yeah. much ma'am that is my understanding was correct no yes ma'am yes ma'am ha uh, because i was worried about my understanding ha uh, thank you so much ma'am yeah uh, thank you ma'am so uh, those were the questions on the whatsapp i think that's all uh, from uh, from with respect to questions Uh, so, ma'am, uh, Karuna, ma'am, shall we go ahead? Yeah, please, 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 please go ahead. Please go. Ahead. Uh, yes. So, ma'am, uh, it was indeed a wonderful session, as it is uh, evident from all those messages in the Zoom chat box. But from our side, uh, we need to have a formal vote of thanks. So, I would like to invite our PhD research scholar, uh, Mansi Gupta, to deliver the vote of thanks. Mansi, over to you. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Am I audible? Good afternoon. Yes. 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 All right. A very good afternoon to one and all. On behalf of our parent body, Gujarat Research Society, Principal Madam Dr. Anita Swami, entire HJCE team, and all the participants of the capacity building program and pre PhD course, I, Miss Mansi Gupta, take this opportunity to convey our heartfelt gratitude. to a vibrant resource person dr pradnya ma we truly appreciate for taking out time from your extremely busy schedule to share your immense knowledge and experience with us which have really enlightened everyone over here ma'am not only that you also created a comfort zone for all the participants and patiently answer their queries at regular intervals during the session i'm sure all of us did not hesitate to get our queries clarified from you once again i may like to express our sincere thanks to dr pradnya ma'am for giving an excellent coverage on tool construction even from a distance in an online mode thank you ma'am for your guidance and wisdom you truly motivated us as you rightly said we are humans and can make mistakes but learn from your mistakes thank you ma'am for this word and motivating us we also take this opportunity to salute you for the wonderful and inspiring contribution to the field of education and truly honored by your presence today i now request dr karuna ma'am to take over for further communications over to you dr karuna ma'am thank you mansi thank you so much we wanted to convey to pradnya ma'am you have very beautifully conveyed that thank you ma'am thank you so much <laughs> yeah, thank you very much dr thank karuna you. dr usha and mansi to thank you all the participant for patiently listening for two and a half hours so thank you very much thank you i enjoyed to uh, say thank you that three of us who are here have got a special myself usha and archana have got a special bond with s and d of course and, and, <laughs> and you know that and you have been a part of that special bond always and that will always yes yes thank yes you. yes yeah kindly convey yeah. my regards to ma principal ma'am yeah yeah ma'am as karuna ma'am said i have been associated with you right from my mn whatever research knowledge i have ma'am it is because of you no. you have been my med guide you have been my phd guide and thank you so much ma'am 
thank you yeah. thank you very thank much thank you archana archana was the one who keep waiting for me i told her long back <laughs> maybe you know you can just continue your phd somewhere because i wanted to you know like i was at the verge of you know quitting a job that time but she was the one no 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 i will wait and she really waited for i think maybe 7 8 8 long years yes, so thank you archana actually for that <laughs> ma'am i had made up my mind in mid itself <laughs> if i have to do phd i have to do with pradnya ma'am so i could have waited for how many years oh, you know, so thank you and so thank much you. Thank, thank you thank you thank you for you. having the such a wonderful <laughs> relationship thank you chef and we all thank cherish you. this relationship we thank all you, relationship. yes 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 thank you so much ma'am thank you so much and uh, bye 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 ma'am and uh, bye. Bye. so uh, participants we have come to an end uh, to day 5 and uh, tomorrow is the last day uh, we are going to meet again at 11 o'clock with yet another enriching session uh, till then please do take care of yourself um, wish you a very nice blessed evening and see you all tomorrow and uh, the question for uh, for pre phd course today's question shall be posted in the evening thank you so much all of you yeah. chalo, bye bye i hope thank i, you, I make thank some you. chalo bye yes. bye bye everyone bye. have a wonderful day chalo bye thank you ma'am thank you ma'am bye 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 very good my colleague uh, dr usha bodka to please end up the meeting please usha yes yeah yes i shall do that